This talk that I am going to give today is, in a sense, the heart of the message of this channel. And I would hope that if you hear anything from this channel, you listen to the points from this talk. Because I believe that it has the potential to save your family. In the Second Vatican Council, some core doctrines came to the forefront to be applied at the church's level of governance primarily. What has happened, in my opinion, is that these doctrines have extrapolated themselves or have been extrapolated down to the Catholic family's level. And so this is often, they're reflected in homilies, they're reflected in personal practices, and the effect of these doctrines is extremely important for any Catholic family trying to survive in the world today. So let's begin with the term oft-repeated yet rarely understood, religious liberty. This notion as interpreted in our time is no longer what the church once taught. For 2,000 years, the church embraced tolerance, or in other words, the ability to coexist with other faiths while affirming the supremacy of the one true church. But religious liberty, as it is now understood, implies something more dangerous, that All religions lead equally to God, that we may lower the cross of Christ to sit on the same level as Buddha's lotus or the crescent of Islam. This was never the Catholic way, and it never can be. If we welcome all beliefs, all equally valid, our faith becomes just another option, a voice among many, rather than the voice of him who is truth itself. And so no Catholic household can embrace this error without undermining the very foundation of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ as the head of a Catholic household. One cannot allow every wind of doctrine to blow through the family like a common draft. We must close the door against these secular influences and say, as Joshua did, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And next, let us turn to conciliarism. This new notion of authority in the church is not solely vested in the Pope, but in the community, a dialogue of sorts. In our families, we cannot have two captains steering the ship. A Catholic home must have order, and order requires authority. Just as Christ is the head of the church, so too must there be a head in every Catholic home. If we bring the spirit of conciliarism into our families, we bring division, dissent, disunity. Authority shared without distinction is authority diminished. Remember, a house divided against itself cannot stand, and neither can a church. We then encounter the great cry of ecumenism. Yes, we Catholics are to love all, to live in peace with our separated brethren. But here too, we must be vigilant. Ecumenism today too often means a watering down, a loosening, a softening of the distinctions that define us. It suggests that we may enter a common faith as brothers, setting aside those hard teachings that distinguish the bride of Christ from beliefs of the world. This ecumenism is an erasure, a bleaching of the colors of our faith until nothing unique remains. In this process, we lose what we once held sacred, trading the depths of Catholic worship for the familiarity of Protestant practices, exchanging the doctrine of salvation for something nearly akin to mercy alone. Yet mercy without justice is like a rainbow without rain. It is beautiful, but ultimately sterile, a half-truth that cannot sustain the soul. And of course, we must address the greatest wound of all, the assault on the sacred. Modern man no longer trembles before the divine. The altar is no longer set apart. It has been brought down to the level of the people. The holy has become ordinary, and the liturgy now resembles a gathering of neighbors more than a meeting with the Most High. The sanctuary, once a dwelling place for God, is now a stage. How, then, can our children be raised with any sense of reverence, with any awe for the things of God? If even in his house we treat him as one of us, without a sense of the sacred, we risk turning our homes into secular havens rather than sanctuaries of prayer. And so these teachings... The tolerance of errors, the division of authority, the blurring of our unique faith, the loss of the sacred, all of these have taken root, not just in parishes, but in families, in homes that once were refuges of the faith. How many Catholic households have been lost to secular humanism because they have allowed these modern ideas to penetrate their walls? 
Families that once knelt together in prayer now sit distracted before screens, united by nothing more than a vague concept of being good people. This is not Catholic. This is not the faith of our fathers. It is a counterfeit that offers comfort without conviction, peace without sacrifice. But all of these wounds, religious liberty, conciliarism, ecumenism, the loss of the sacred, pale in comparison to the deepest wound of all, the disappearance of the doctrine of hell. Here is the hinge, the point on which all else turns. Our Lord's first sermon was not about comfort or tolerance. His first command was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And why repent? Because he tells us the road to perdition is broad. And many, even most, and truly most, Matthew 7.13, choose the path that leads to hell. This is the teaching of Christ, not of men. Yet today this doctrine is ignored, even denied. Universalism has crept into the faith like a thief, stealing away our urgency, our vigilance, our fear of the Lord. Hell, my friends, is not a mere concept. It is a real terrible place, a place from which there is no escape. Christ himself warned of it more than any other prophet or apostle. He did not come to tell us that we were all safe. He came to tell us that without him, we are lost. And if we lose this doctrine, if we lose this understanding that salvation must be actively sought and that the cost of sin is nothing less than eternal damnation, then what remains of the gospel? What meaning has the cross? What urgency remains for the Catholic soul? In losing the doctrine of hell, we have lost the first doctrine, the warning upon which every other teaching of Christ depends. We have lost the compass, the north star, that directs us to heaven by reminding us of the very real possibility of hell, that without that compass, how can we guide our children? our families, our church. So I say, reclaim these lost keys of the kingdom. Teach your children that Catholicism is not one choice among many. It is the only path ordained by God for salvation. Reclaim the authority of your home and the reverence in your worship. Let the sacred be sacred. And let the doctrine of hell and the necessity of repentance stand at the forefront of your faith. For in the end, The Catholic who lives without fear of hell lives without the urgency to seek heaven. If we are to restore our faith, we must begin here with a renewal not just of doctrine, but of conviction. A conviction that, come what may, we shall teach, we shall preach, we shall live the fullness of our Catholic faith. The road may be narrow, but it is the road that leads to eternal life.